What Alex has done is a guide to conservative publication. Essentially a ranking of the best of the sort of online right news outlets and, uh, and pages. And like th these are all my favorites, you know? And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to go through each one of them. You have to rank them by demeanor. How thoroughly do they embody the worst characteristics of conservative writing? How smug are they? How convinced are they of their own superior intellect? Are they painfully, seethingly horny? <laughs> <laughs> A.K.A. the walking I mean, stick scale. That has to be all of them, right? <laughs> yeah. No, Who's I, I, not horny on the right host? <laughs> All of them are excreting something from their pores. For some of them, it's sweat. For some of them, it's cum. <laughs> and you start with Breitbart, the big B. Hell yeah. The B-boys. The Don uh, Cape de Tutti Capo, <laughs> as they say in the mafia. Uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, Steve Bannon was, you know, took over. Now he's in the White House. But uh, you right here of Breitbart. Uh, following in the footsteps of founder Andrew Breitbart, whose 2012 death from a heart attack at 43 may or may not have been related to using the internet too much. <laughs> <laughs> the current staff keeps it cranked to 11 at all times. Every headline is in all caps, and most are devoted to defending Trump's honor against anti-Trump hysteria from the fake news. The rest are all about migrant rape crisis, illegal immigrants, or black shoplifters. <laughs> So that's a pretty good uh, summary of what's on Breitbart. But like, how would you describe the sort of Breitbart house style? It's exactly what your racist uncle wants to read. It's just like divorced guys who are like 55 to 65. They have high blood pressure. They take Viagra, but it doesn't work. <laughs> and they, uh, they just want to get angry. They just have an endorphin rush from being as angry as possible. So they log on. They get the all caps headlines. But it's actually become slightly less racist, interestingly enough. Um, now that Steve Bannon is absent, they used to have a black crime tag, Ugh. which they don't oh, they don't Jesus. use anymore. Um, and I'm looking at it right now, and they've got a the Bill Maher headline, and they actually star out that famous word we all know and love. <laughs> wow! Yeah, they're looks, like so they're, they're, they're learning and growing better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the first things I noticed that's on Breitbart right now is that like. It still is uh, just sort of um, running flack for Steve Bannon now that he's in the White House. And like two of the top news items are meltdown in red, globalists revive President Bannon taunt post Paris pullout. And then right underneath it, New York Times, Trump climate decision, a victory for Steve Bannon. Yeah, Folks, I know it looked like Steve Bannon was out of commission for a while, but he was just molting. <laughs> <laughs> he burst forth out of his glistening carapace and is ready to make America great again. <laughs> Meltdown. Steve Bannon is literally melting. <laughs> Steve, ba Steve Bannon triggers Kushner wing by shedding skin and laying eggs in the Lincoln bedroom. <laughs> Oh, wow. Steve, Steve Bannon is creating a black mold in the Resolute desk. <laughs> Everyone's complaining, but they weren't complaining when Bill Clinton was getting blowjobs in there. Triggered. And now for each one of these, uh, Alex, you, you also do, uh, like, uh, underneath your little description, you have a worst current headline. And the one you have for Breitbart <laughs> is five unanswered questions about ABC's cancellation of Last Man Standing. <laughs> <laughs> They're very, very mad about that. They're well, very mad that... Um, um, that Tim Allen is no longer on the air doing uh, doing his uh, extremely racist version of Tim Taylor. <laughs> I've seen that show. It's insane. Really? What, yeah, it's yeah, Nick. What is the show? Through it. Oh my god. It's ba yeah, it's basically he's uh, it's home improvement, but instead of all sons, it's all daughters, and he wants to fuck the daughters, <laughs> and he's angry at the daughters' boyfriends because. They don't, uh, they're not traditionally masculine enough, like him who uh, vlogs for a living, I guess. The, uh, the second website on our uh, tour of Hades is The Daily Wire. And this is uh, Ben Shapiro's little vanity project. And I just want to read here. Upon opening the website, a splash screen demands that you read Shapiro's free ebook titled Five Lies Colleges Tell Your Kids. The anti college beat has been his shtick for 13 years. While a student at UC LA, he built a media brand around remaining a proud virgin in the face of widespread liberal indoctrination and sexual <laughs> debauchery. Now a decade 
decade out of college, the sources of Shapiro's emotional angst have broadened somewhat. <laughs> I'm sorry. The phrase proud virgin is so good. That was the original that Proud Boys. That was the original boy. name for Proud Boys. And, and lo and behold, I know, Brendan, you just said we've been talking about this for the last 20 minutes, but one of the top things that you on the Daily Wire right now is... Uh, Again, still angry that Last Man Standing was canceled. <laughs> Alex, I just opened the Daily Wire website, and of course, I was immediately hit with "Get this ebook free!" And it's just uh, the the photo of the this cover is like Ben's eyes, and then five lies written over his little boyish mouth. Yeah, his that's Ben's piercing sta- sexual eyes. That's Ben standing on the toilet. <laughs> peer over, peer over the, peer over the trench and see if any sicko trench raiders have entered the bathroom. It says, in addition to an ad-free experience, gain access to our ebook library as a basic subscriber. Try it now. No credit card required. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, just last but not least, in the daily, the Daily Wire. Uh, what an awful name, too. The Daily Wire. You have under worst current headline. James Woods destroys Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards in single tweet. <laughs> right in the show. So th- that's Ben's startup, and the, the, the model is a subscription model for incredibly old people who are mad that young people are having sex and going to college and things like that. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. The people who want to read that don't know what an ebook is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine that like ninety percent of uh, Daily Water, Wire's help or support email is just people like I subscribed, I checked my mail, my ebook hasn't come. <laughs> Are you cheating me? I knew not to trust you. All those articles on that website just get printed out by grandparent grandchildren <laughs> and given to the grandparents. <laughs> Next up on the roster, we have Heat Street. Uh, now, tell me about the SJWs, George. <laughs> Heat Street is sort of a new one. I'm not as familiar with it as the other ones, but it was founded by Louise Mensch. And as you mentioned, that's actually the least objectionable thing about Heat Street. You write here, uh, Heat Street, it it sort of, uh, how would you do it? It sort of aims at a younger audience, right, Alex? Yeah, it's it's for guys who, um, let's see what I said. The ideal reader is male, inexplicably moist looking and furious (laughs) that social justice warriors (laughs) took over his favorite video game for him. I, that line, inexplicably moist looking, is so perfect because yeah. like, I think it, it, it sums these people up so perfectly. They're all so moist. Yeah, they all look like they just slept under a porch on a rainy day <laughs> and just had to roll into the office and be like, ah, why Ubisoft wants to kill white people. <laughs> <laughs> but like, this is all like like video game shit. This is clearly like the the weird mutation of like like Gamergate, the news outlet, right? Yeah, it's sort of like Breitbart. It's sort of like what Milo did for Breitbart, but it's all that. It doesn't have any, uh, you know, black shoplifters or whatever. So it's just like right, right to the vein of uh, Lena Dunham said this. If you open it up right now, first thing is Lena Dunham, <coughs> who is uh, no longer has a TV show and is not currently doing anything, but they are still laser focused on Lena Dunham. <coughs> it's like it's it's just pure culture war shit. So it's like. Um, we found this thing in a uh, gender studies uh, journal that has four subscribers. Uh, people on Twitter said this triggered libs in Facebook comment threads. Black Lives Matter thugs in GTA Online walk around saying hands up, don't shoot at airport in game. <laughs> <laughs> It's the biggest story. I was uh, in that protest. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at their their, 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 I'm looking at their Twitter right now, and there's just one headline that just says "Never give in to snowflakes." <laughs> but uh, Virgil, uh, I remember you had an interaction with Heat Street back uh, during yeah. the, the Garf controversy. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the soggy boys wanted to do an article about it. <laughs> These are all like message board posters who are tryhards, like. I, they're probably going to write about this segment, which is awful. Uh, I'm told they yeah, have you can, no... Poli- you can explicitly bait them. There was someone who said, uh, like last week, I think, they, they said something, and then at the bottom of the tweet, they said, uh, Heat Street, please write about this. And then a guy put it on Heat Street. He embedded the tweet it was and Brian got Feldman. mad about it anyway. Yeah, these guys, they don't... It's ostensibly conservative, but none of these individuals have any kind of political values. They're just sort of what I like to call train obsessives on the internet. Right. I, I mean, I think that, like, gaming became a political spectrum in 2014, but these people are still mad about it, and so you have the gamer spectrum where, 
you know, on the far right, you have these guys who like scream at any game that has like white enemies that you shoot. <laughs> and then on the <laughs> left, you have uh, people who pretend to make video games and uh, like, you know, I don't, I don't know what they're mad about. But I would say Virgil and I, we're kind of like the no labels of gamers. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We absolutely are. <laughs> Radical, Radical centrists. There's yeah. this one guy from there who's like, he was uh, he was like a Nazi on the internet. And and, and then he became a uh, anti-gamer gate guy. And then he just kept getting made fun of. Isn't so he became a Ian pro Miles gamer He's game. Ian Miles? Yeah, he's the soggy guy who's like the mirror image of Arthur Chu. <laughs> and because they both have an ant problem. <laughs> 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 he is so so moist. He supported Trump because uh, because of Drain the Swamp. <laughs> <laughs> With, uh, Drain the cyst. <laughs> <laughs> Out in a minute. <laughs> but first of all, I remember uh, uh, the, the Heat Street guys, they, they reached out to you for comment about your, your Garfield gender thing, yeah. and your response to them was great. I think it was just basically you said like... It was uh, like, go fuck yourself in your libertarian website. <laughs> and then they printed that. There were... <laughs> yeah, and this like really excruciating article. These guys can really kill a joke. Oh man, safe space libs are triggered by based Jim Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Garfield's too transgressive. And now we go to one of my personal favorites, the Federalist. Woo! Woo! <laughs> the thing that I think you point out about the Federalist that's so interesting is that like every one we've talked about so far is basically like we've described, sort of a, a halfway, a group home for sort of, as you described, <laughs> red-faced louts and uh, country club closet cases. Yeah. What's interesting about The Federalist is it is like, their masthead is like overwhelmingly women in their 20s. And it is very much like geared towards sort of like young women. And like, it's sort of like this very like, their, their, their obsessions are very like lifestyle and family focused. It's sort of like Teen Vogue, except they pay their writers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You keep that. Uh, no, but they're My very favorite worried. thing about like, it is, is that, you know, I mean, obviously it's not profitable. It's one of these uh, AstroTurf things where, you know, like the Heartland Institute or some fucking monstrous extraction industry is pumping money into that as part of their, like, broader propaganda campaign in favor of low taxes and regulation and allowing the earth to be cooked to death. Uh, but they just sort of accept, yeah, like the side effect of that is that we're going to fund a bunch of weirdos to put out their sexual uh, uh, perversions on the internet all the time. Like it's just a weird sub, it's just this weird uh, side effect of all of the propaganda money is that, oh yeah, the uh, uh, Hemingways are going to talk about their special relationship again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm at the Federalist website right now, and one of the headlines at the top of the masthead is, this robot priest heralds Christianity's death in Europe. <laughs> Uh, a it's very a <laughs> regular article by a regular person. It's a normal publication. But like, unlike all the other websites that are incredibly horny because they're they're weird pent up guys, these are all incredibly horny from like young Christian women. Yeah, yeah. these are like trad women. Uh, and March they're of dimes. Federalist. Uh, they 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 lord this over that how their newsroom is majority woman, even though it's incredibly reactionary. And the actual writers they hire are pretty dumb, and I, I, they're I, incredibly. Are they dumb. really attractive? There's, oh fuck, they're so hot. There's yeah. this one person. I, I I'm not going to say her name because it's irrelevant. But she her beat is like, uh, you know, I swipe right on everyone in D.C. like that kind of shit. And she has some problem with her student loans. I just want to read this excerpt from an article she wrote. If I had done my homework, I would have learned that the interest rate for a federal loan at 4.3 percent would have been much lower than the 7.8 percent rate I'm stuck at now. At the time, I. Assumed a private loan must be a better deal because it didn't have the government involved. <laughs> private means more yeah, competitive and less expensive, right? Oh she my God. also wrote this article. Oh no, uh, oh, honey, she honey, that's exactly what they don't want you to write. <laughs> you write, uh, Alex, just you write here. Uh, the tendency of American women to lean slightly more liberal on social issues is not evident here. The Federalist is almost singularly paranoid about threats to the nuclear family and traditional values. 
What are those threats? Well, the marginal practice of identifying as a dog mom, for one, which is apparently causing the millennial generation to, quote, miss out on the real joys of parenthood. If that isn't scary enough, you can also fret about the dangers of junior high sex ed, fall for a Bill Nye Photoshop hoax, or complain that the American girl dogs are virtue signaling. (laughs) (laughs) Last but not least on this epic rundown of the conservative media, is the last and best, still the reigning king, still the number one entry in the Chapo reading series by far, and it's not even close, the oldest, the best, the National Review. (laughs) Y'all know who it is. Uh, Of course, founded in 1955 by William F. Buckley. Uh, You write here, Buckley's life's work was to create a new, more noxious brand of American conservatism that wedded backwoods Christianity to robber baron economic policies. In Buckley's view, his magazine was part of an intellectual tradition dating back to John Locke and Edmund Burke. Unfortunately for him, no such tradition ever existed. In reality, the review is part of a tradition of white resentment and cultural philistinism dating back to John C. Calhoun and Ben Tillman. And that is uh, exactly right. I mean, like, the National Review styles himself as being, like, the intellectual masthead for the conservative movement. But, like, the intellectual in that phrase is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Because you brought up the Weekly Standard has uh, one article about the dog rates account. Currently on the National Review, there's two articles by the same author, a guy named Ian Tuttle, lamenting <laughs> lamenting that politics has crept into, in his words, one of the best accounts on Twitter. <laughs> See, this is why I love the National Review, because they are bold and forthright in their opposition to minority grievance culture. Right, yeah. yeah they exactly. don't want a culture where everyone's complaining all the time about, oh, uh, systematic police brutality, uh, economic exploitation, meh, 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 meh. I mean, you've got to be a grown-up and complain about the uh, stupid dog Twitter account being liberal to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ian Turtle is there, Seymour. This is the only place you can see dog pictures on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, once the liberals get to it, it's done. I, I like the idea of Seymour Hirsch working there, like Amber said. Uh, then I talked to my contacts in, uh, in, in the State Department, and they said <laughs> that uh, they said that uh, modern family was going to normalize trans behavior. <laughs> I think you sum up the National Review uh, perfectly here under the goatee qualities. Aggressively pseudo-intellectual, massive victim complex, convinced of its own moral superiority despite being on the wrong side of every issue for nearly 70 years. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem for running a conservative publication for that long. Is it, You really have to shut it down and start a new one every 10 or so years or else you can't claim that uh, liberals are the real racists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't really work when, when the, you, have the, uh, you have the archives going back that said you supported apartheid, you supported segregation, and you're basically against every single policy that would have been good for black people. Well, you said uh, National Review uh, in denouncing the civil rights movement, and I believe this was Buckley himself, uh, denounced it under the guise of uh, the, the Southern whites were, quote, the advanced race. That so. has never been true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's weird. Like, listening to all this in a row, you would be forgiven if you came to the obviously mistaken conclusion that politics is really just a tribal spectacle of acquired grievances and not actually any kind of battle over ideas or policies to, you know, structure human life. But that's, of course, absurd. (laughs) Politics is not the question of who gets what. It's the question of what's on ABC primetime. (laughs) Uh, You know, whether children are allowed to beat you at an NCAA pocket pool. Uh, Politics is downstream from at dog rates. Yeah. (laughs) Liberal grade inflation is uh, is ruining dog rates. <laughs> Whether you can finally get it for everyone, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> when you can finally get a Wolfenstein game where you can play from a different perspective for once, <laughs> <laughs> the real shit about politics.